Hey everyone, today I want to present to you my Project Polish 2017. I plan to rotate through some polishes this uh, year. I plan to finish some. I'm usually pretty good about finishing polishes. I've finished multiple polishes before, which is, I think, why I can stick to it. Uh, I wanted to pick a selection that would be easy to do and that would make sense to me and what I do with my nails. Um, about my nails, my nails are a little bit brittle, uh, but I paint them every two to three days. I top coat them multiple times, usually um, just to refresh, and sometimes I'll throw a glitter on top. I don't do nail art, I don't do any kind of sponging <laughs> techniques. I'm very basic with my nail care and it works for me. So the way I wanted to construct this project polish is rather than to sort of make myself use things up, I want to get value out of the things that I do have. And I have a lot of polish, um, quite an extensive collection, which is why I would like to sort of get through things. I'm not after getting every last drop out of my products and I'm not after finishing things that I don't like. So as I'm pulling polishes from my collection, I'll be making sure that I'm getting decent use out of them. But if I don't like a polish, I reserve a right to switch it out and uh, declutter the one that I don't like. And if the formula um, gets sort of thick and goopy and I cannot revive it with a nail thinner easily, I'm not going to struggle through the polish. I'm going to just call it done. Um, I'm not trying to make my life more complicated. I'm trying to make it easier. So I'll show you how I've set up my project polish. Here I have my box and it's actually a completely perfect size to hold everything I need for a manicure. Um, not the tools, the tools I have separately, but the polishes I'll be using. So this is the box and inside the box we have all the polishes. The way I wanted to do it is I wanted to pick six polishes and uh, when I'm getting through one polish I'll replace it with uh, another polish. And I have a wild card polish in my stash which is going to be interchangeable. Um, I don't want to be stuck in a place where I cannot wear seasonal or like holiday or party appropriate polishes. For example, Easter polish would be in during Easter time, Christmas polish would be in during Christmas time, etc. So let's get to the actual polishes. For my base coat, this is not in the project polish, but it is in my box. I'm using currently Witchcraft Rock Solid Nail Hardener. This is a 10 ml bottle. I do like the applicator brush. Um, it has a very long brush. I do like it. It's very flexible. It sprays out into a nice fan as I'm applying uh, this uh, base coat and again this is a hardener because I am trying to take care of my nails and then I have an SC Gel Couture top coat in 00, zero. of course it's a top coat. Um, this comes in a non-transparent bottle again this polish isn't in my project polish stash is just the top coat I happen to be using but since it's in my box I'm going to mention it today. So I really like the brush on that. This is a flat paddle, sprays out very easily, covers the nail very easily. Uh, it's on right now, it's quite shiny. It wears for about a day or two. It's decent at protecting from chips. I only get tip wear. As I get tip wear, I usually throw a glitter for a day on the tips of my nails and then I uh, remove and redo the whole thing. So this has worked out well. It's not my favorite. Now to the polishes that are actually in my project polish. In my box I also have a nail wheel to show you the swatches and to keep in mind which ones I used up and so on. Um, so here I have only six because I have six to start with and I'll move on to the next wheel once I um, finish some. So number one is an Essie polish and tuck it in my tux. This is a milky white, off-white color really. It a, has a drop of beige in it, a little bit of a warm beige. Um, this is an extremely sheer polish, uh, requires about three to four coats for me. My coats aren't extremely thick. This one is Essie's Tuck It In My Tux. It just basically looks off-white and it is. I'm going to mention the amounts that are in each polish that I do have. Now Essie has a 13.5 milliliter volume in the polishes. Um, 
standard size for most uh, polishes is going to be uh, 15 milliliters. Um, Essie is a little bit lower. This is how much of it I have used up. So this is my progress so far. We'll see how far I get. Since I do require four coats, I expect this is not going to be a huge challenge. I like to wear it as one of the nude options in my stash. Um, however, I don't think I would repurchase this polish. The formula is just not perfect. It doesn't self-level very well. It shows the ridges of the nail. Um, so, I mean, I have better, but I don't, I'm not mad at that one, so I'll use it up. Next, I have a red. I will always have a classic red in my rotation. And in this case, we have a Guerlain polish in the color 121. This is quite a bright, fiery red. This polish has 10 milliliters in it, so it's really quite expensive per milliliter. Um, but I really, really like the polish, which is why, of course, I bought it and which is why I'm including it. This is a one coater if you want to wear it as a one coater. I usually do two coats because I just like the smoothness and the way it looks better at two, but it's pigmented enough to get away with one. If you're in a hurry, this can be a very fast pick for me. And I do use it as a fast polish. This is Guerlain's Red Polish in 121. I don't like wearing this color on long nails uh, on my hands. It seems to look a bit vulgar to me, but I do like it on short nails. I think it looks fantastic on short nails and on, on toenails. So um, on this one, this is how much I've used up so far. I really, really enjoy this polish, which is why I believe, of course, I'll be able to finish it up. The consistency is a nice cream. And here we have also my favorite kind of brush. It's a petal brush, very nice, easy to use applicator, very, very uh, smooth and just pleasant application. I love it when polishes just go on and you don't have to work with it. This is a no brainer. You don't have to work with this one. Next, I have another neutral option and then we'll move on to maybe slightly more exciting colors. This is a Deborah Lipman. This is Deborah Lipman's Human Nature. This is a beautiful, nudie mauve. Um, I really like wearing this one. This is what I have on my nails right now. It's an easy, easy to wear color, very work appropriate, which is a reason I picked it. This one is a full, full polish. I am right here at the very, very top. I used it only a few times in total before including it in my um, a project. However, I do think I'll be able to get through it eventually, although it might take a while, simply because this is a neutral color that will actually carry me through every season. Um, Deborah Lipman does have a decent amount in. It is 15 milliliters. Um, the brush on this is decent. It's not my favorite brush, but it's also very easy to use. A bit skinny for my taste but uh, it's not difficult to use. The polish itself is good. Consistency, the formula doesn't pull, doesn't run. It covers the nail quite smoothly. It self-levels pretty well. It does require two coats for full opacity. Next, we have a vampy pick of the bunch. I love vampy polishes, especially in winter time. I really can't go without, therefore I included one that I, I knew I could use up pretty quickly and it'd be a quick gratification pick. And this one here is the Picture Polish Vampire. This is a, an indie pick. This is the Vampire by Picture Polish. It is a beautiful, beautiful vampy purple toned jelly, quite dark. Um, this polish is something that I've uh, accidentally discovered and had fallen in love with, probably enough to eventually repurchase it. Once I get through a few of these vampy colors, I think I'll go back to this one because it is lovely for people who really like jelly polishes. Uh, the application is very smooth. The polish self-levels well. Uh, two to three coater, really, depending on the thickness of the coats that you like to do. It doesn't take for forever, forever to dry. It's not a fast drying polish by any means, but for the jelly, you kind of sign up for a bit of a longer drying time. The result being those squishy, jelly-looking nails that I actually do like a lot. So, for me, this is how much I've used up, and this is how much I have left on of this bottle. 
Um, this bottle is not huge and contains only 11 milliliters um, compared to the Deborah Lippmann, for instance, or the OPI bottles. Uh, this one is quite sm a lot smaller. Um, I love this polish. Let me show you the brush. Actually, this had thickened up a bit, so I had to use thinner to include it in my project polish. The brush is fine. It's a bit of a flattened uh, brush, which I enjoy. It doesn't cover as well as, for instance, the Guerlain brush, which is my favorite kind. It's a very easy application, though. I can't complain. The polish is great. The color is fantastic. The consistency is good. And the application is quite easy. Next, I have another Deborah Lippman pick. And here, um, this is a mini, actually. One that I have been using for a long time and I've been actually saving for a while because I love this color. This is a Deborah Lippman from... I'm not sure which collection, but it is called a Raspberry Beret. This one is so interesting because it's one of the flaky shimmer polishes. It has this sort of dark fuchsia base to it. Quite a raspberry color, I would say, but dark. Um, and it has uh, these iridescent flaky glitters floating quite densely in the polish. Very good glitter coverage with this one. The jelly base really allows the... Um, flakies catch the light and look very cool and interesting on the nail and the flakies themselves are sort of multifaceted because they flash uh, gold, purple, green, yellow, just really really beautiful. Um, the progress on this is actually quite good. I only have this much left of the polish. Uh, Deborah Lippmann's minis include 8 milliliters of product in the bottle so it's actually a very generous sample size I think because most polishes carry like three four maybe five milliliters in their minis and Deborah Lippmann are very generous with their with their minis so um since I have actually successfully found it not a duke but perhaps a similar kind of formula and effect to this one. I am now comfortable just using it up because I was for the longest time on the hunt and uh, wouldn't use this very much. So this one I think is going to be one of the first ones to go and to be replaced by something else. This is Deborah Lipman's Raspberry Beret polish. Last polish in my mandatory polishes is the Sally Hansen Hardest Nails Extreme Wear Polish in 219 Strobe Light. This is quite a famous little pick. This one is Sally Hansen's Strobe Light. If you look into the bottle, you can see how glittery and fun this is. This is definitely a party polish, a topper, something to wear over your nail polish on the weekend or do crazy toes, which nobody can see at work. For me, this is how, how I would wear it. And uh, this one I actually have a decent amount of progress on. Of course, it's a glitter, so it's being used up faster. If you want to build up this glitter, you need to do really maybe three coats. Um, so it'll still be not completely full coverage, but it's so glittery and sparkly and distracting that you're not going to notice. So three coats is completely fine for this polish. Um, so because it's a glitter, of course, it's going a little bit faster than a cream polish would. But this is how much I have uh, used up here and I'm quite happy with the, the color. This pick is actually really fun, so I'm excited. I'm excited to see what I'm going to do with that one. Now for the wild card of this uh, rotation is really going to be another glitter for me because I feel like having fun with glitters over, over winter time is, um, you know, brightening up my mood because of the gloomy weather. It's uh, absolutely necessary to have a little bit of fun with your makeup and polish. So for this time and this, I'm going to again swap out whenever I want. I can keep it for another month. I can replace it with another polish next month. But this one is going to be Snow Globe Trotter from OPI. Again, I'm not completely sure which collection it was from, but you see the fun that is in this bottle. So this is a clear co uh, polish that has these, first of all, different sizes and uh, shapes of white glitter, white matte glitter that sit mostly at the bottom. Therefore, actually not my favorite part of the polish, but there's really very limited pickup of this particular glitter. The rest of the polish is really this iridescent 
fun blue yellow shifty flaky and glittery goop um, i've discovered that this kind of a polish uh, the iridescent really fun pretty one goes very well either very dark nails or very very light nails and i have enjoyed wearing these together in the past this this one i'm not marking because i don't have a goal of finishing it up but uh, there is basically very little to no use on it um, and this is going to be my refresher polish i've decided because uh, especially if i wear light colors and if i see that maybe they're not as glossy or as nice and bright as they were before then i will throw on something like uh, Essie's Shine of the Times, or in this case, this one, just to freshen it up and have fun with it. This is not a polish that you can wear on its own. It does not have enough glitter pickup to really stand alone as a um, polish. It's a topper for me. This is my spread of colors that I'm using this rotation. I'll update you on how it's going. See you later. Bye-bye.